हेलो फ्रेंड्स अनदर वीक अनदर वीडियो एंड एज प्रोमिस्ड दिस इज गोइंग टू बी अ क्लिनिकल केस बेस्ड क्वेश्चन द मल्टीपल चॉइस क्वेश्चन एंड वी विल डिस्कस इन डिटेल इट्स आंसर एंड एक्सप्लेनेशन सो विदाउट फर्दर अडू लेट स्टार्ट विद द क्वेश्चन फॉर दिस वीक इट वॉज रिलेटेड टू द नर्वस सिस्टम दैट हिंट इज ऑलरेडी गिवन अ थर्टी ईयर ओल्ड मेल केम टू द फिजिशियन विथ रिसेंट एपिसोड ऑफ सीजर एंड along with neuropsychiatric symptoms of recent onset like uh, memory loss or um, uh, personality changes mood changes etc which were described by the uh, family members now there is a past history of syphilis so uh, at the outset it is uh, given up that this is a past history of syphilis with uh, presenting symptoms of uh, i mean neurological manifestations uh, are the presenting symptoms that means it could be a possibility of neurosyphilis already uh, the hint is given now on cns examination this is the critical part of this mcq on clinical uh, on cns examination pupils show constriction while looking at a near object but do not respond when torch light is shown when torch light is thrown the pupils do not respond but uh, pupils constrict while looking at the near object so this was the uh, hint about this mcq and uh, what could be the most probable site of lesion so here first of all you need to identify the disease you need to identify what kind of a pupil is this and then the most probable site of lesion and the options were optic chiasma mid brain occipital lobe or meninges and many of you have tried to answer and in fact have answered correctly Uh, the answer was mid brain so let's understand why the answer is mid brain and what was this condition now first of all um, it is mentioned very clearly that uh, it is a uh, past history of syphilis is there and with the neurological manifestations that means it is likely to be neurosyphilis now uh, the pupil now listen to this part carefully the pupils are constricted while looking at the near object so uh, when we are looking at the near object pupils show constriction and this is called as accommodation reaction or also called as accommodation convergence reaction let's understand this that uh, when we are looking at a nearby object uh, the image is first perceived faintly okay some changes in the eye are necessary in order to see that object clearly so what happens is uh, those changes first of all are called as accommodation reaction or accommodation convergence reaction see first a faint image is perceived that is image is carried by the second cranial nerve which is shown here the visual pathway the second cranial nerve then optic chiasma optic tract lateral geniculate nucleus all the way to the occipital lobe visual cortex situated most posteriorly and that faint perception of image in the visual cortex will then send the fibers anteriorly from the occipital lobe the fibers or the signals will be sent anteriorly where the signals will be sent to the third cranial nerve nucleus edinger westphal nucleus of the third cranial nerve uh, where the signals are sent and then this nerve or to be more precise edinger westphal nucleus of the third cranial nerve is sending the fibers to the eye and the changes in the eye will be made what are those changes three changes remember a uh, increased curvature of the lens because the object is nearby so power of the lens needs to be increased ciliary body contraction increased curvature of the lens then pupillary constriction as we have noted already pupils constrict and third is medial rotation of the eyes when we are looking at the near object there is medial rotation or convergence of the eyes right these three changes happen and all these three changes are carried out by the third cranial nerve so 
this is accommodation convergence reaction for the near objects to be seen clearly the sensory nerve is the second cranial nerve and the motor nerve is the third cranial nerve the oculomotor nerve edinger westphal nucleus of the third cranial nerve and this is the entire pathway entire circuit for the accommodation reaction that the signals reach all the way to the visual cortex and a faint image is perceived first uh, for the for that nearby object and then via edinger westphal nucleus the signals are sent uh, to the eye and these changes are accommodated or these changes are uh, performed made uh, so uh, that is the accommodation reaction now coming to the mcq uh, in this particular case accommodation reaction was present it's mentioned that while looking at the near object the pupils show constriction that means this entire pathway is intact only then it is possible so second cranial nerve and the third cranial nerve are intact in fact this entire pathway is intact so accommodation reaction is present but pupillary light reflex is absent it is mentioned clearly that uh, when the light is thrown in the in the eye there is no response from the pupil pupils do not constrict so pupillary light reflex is absent now this type of a pupil is called as is called as yes you guessed it right it is argil robertson pupil and uh, the famous mnemonic you must be already aware of this mnemonic about the argil robertson pupil accommodation reaction is present ARP accommodation reaction is present but pupillary reflex is absent pupillary reflex or pupillary light reflex is absent ARP PRA that's Argil Robertson pupil a very famous mnemonic now pupillary reflex is absent uh, so we need to understand what is the pathway for pupillary light reflex look uh, pupillary light reflex has sensory nerve second cranial nerve when the torch light is thrown in the eye second cranial nerve carries the impulses about this and then now note this point okay this is the most crucial point second cranial nerve is the sensory nerve and pupillary constriction is carried out by the third cranial nerve which is the motor nerve edinger westphal nucleus will cause constriction of the pupil in the normal case but between these two nerves second and third nerve there is an interneuron note this point there is an interneuron called as pretectal nucleus so visual pathway gives off a collateral to excite the pretectal nucleus and pretectal nucleus sends the signal to the edinger westphal nucleus so sensory nerve second nerve motor nerve third nerve and between these two nerves there is this interneuron the pretectal nucleus now look tectum roof of the midbrain is called as tectum and uh, in this roof there are these four bodies that you are aware superior and inferior colliculi but it's the midbrain region the tectum and in this region there is this pretectal nucleus the interneuron between second and third cranial nerve now coming to the uh, final step accommodation reaction is present in the given case so that accommodation reaction pathway is intact but pupillary light reflex is absent pupillary light reflex is absent look second and third cranial nerves are intact okay we have already seen that in the accommodation reaction but pupillary light reflex is still absent so where is the possible site of damage it must be at the pretectal nucleus region midbrain region this is only a diagrammatic representation midbrain region must have been damaged uh, 
I'm, I repeat once again, this is only a diagrammatic representation, but damage in the midbrain region, damage to the pretectal nucleus. And therefore, although light thrown in the eye, the impulses are carried by the second cranial nerve, but those impulses cannot be passed on to the third cranial nerve because the damage is to the pretectal nucleus, damage is the uh, in the region of midbrain. And therefore, uh, there is no constriction of the pupils when light is thrown in the eye, but constriction is seen during the accommodation reaction. So that's the Argyll Robertson pupil uh, in this particular instance. And uh, the answer to this MCQ was midbrain region. The lesion must have been in the midbrain region. So that was the MCQ for this week, the clinical case based MCQ. Next week, another MCQ.